Let's keep it wonderful. Good afternoon. I'm Christine Taylor Lewis. And on behalf of the Afro-American Historical Association of Care, I thank you for your support and welcome you to this uh, seventh in a series of conversations with family historians and others who will share their genealogy research or provide information related to the local African-American community. Now, in keeping with the AAHA mission, we endeavor to collect, document, preserve, and share U.S. history with a focus on African-Americans in Fort Care County. Our hope is that these series of virtual events will serve as a gateway to the extensive collection of information that is available in our museum, our library, our media and research rooms, as well as the various social um, media outlets such as Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, and of course our website. So remember to visit us at aahaforcare.org. That is aahaforcare.org. Now, during the month of April, the focus of our conversations will be on the subject of migration. History tells us that roughly between the 1910s until the 1970s, approximately 6 million African Americans moved from the American South to Northern, Midwestern, and Western states in a mass movement known as the Great Migration. The driving force behind this movement was to escape racial violence, to pursue economic and edu educational opportunities, and to gain freedom from the oppression of Jim Crow. Many four care natives, including myself, left the Southern soil in order to cultivate their futures on more fertile ground to be found in other states. So this month's Zoom calls will highlight two four care families and their unique migration stories. Because of unforeseen circumstances, today's guest visitor, Victoria Johnson of Newport, Rhode Island is unable to be with us personally. However, our executive director, Karen Hughes White, will join Angela Davidson and myself to talk about the great migration as it relates to the ancestors they share with their cousin, Victoria Johnson. In addition, Karen will give a PowerPoint presentation that ultimately reveals how two cousins in different states tell the African-American story in the communities where they grew up. Now at this point, it is with joy and delight that I present to you AAHA's own Angela Davidson, who will share her thoughts with us about today's events. Thank you, Christine, and good afternoon, everyone. Needless to say, I'm excited today. Um, last year, AAHA worked closely with the Piedmont Environmental Council and a grant funded by the PATH Foundation to present a story map of Falkir's African American communities. Sources for the map's narrative included numerous articles from the circuit and African American newspapers circulated primarily here in Northern Virginia. Local communities would tell of the happenings in their neighborhood. Very often, it told of family members returning home for a visit. They might come from DC, New York, Chicago, and other places. The visit might be for a wedding, a memorial service, or for a summer break, getting reacquainted to life on a farm in America's rural South. It was with the story map that I truly realized the impact of Black migration on the rural communities the community might have lost the daily presence of their loved ones, but their presence was felt through letters, cards, photographs, and visits. Today's presentation will tell the story of one of Morgantown's families impacted by the Great Migration. 
described in some sources as running through the 1900s all the way to 1970. There's also an irony of sorts that over 100 years later, two great granddaughters of Jesse and Lily Griggs Book Ford are accomplishing similar goals, one in the South and one in the North. From today's presentation, it is our hope that here at AAHA, that others will collect their family stories of black migration. I'm going to read a quote from my cousin, Victoria Johnson, after which Karen will present the story of this family's migration. In 2017, before the Newport City Council, Victoria Johnson of Newport Middle Passage Committee noted, quote, Newport became very prosperous in the triangle trade, unquote. But when growing up in Newport, quote, we were all told that we were equal, but we never had a history lesson in black heritage, close quote. And this history was not discussed. The planned monument would be an important step in opening up public discussion on African-American her heritage in Newport's history and memorializing the 106,000 Africans carried into slavery aboard Rhode Island slave ships. It will occupy Liberty Square, a site listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Karen. Thank you, Angela and Christine. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Today, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the family history, beginning with Bristol Grigsby, who married a woman by the name of Nancy Glasscock. Bristol was born around 1825, and his wife Nancy, about 19, I mean 1835, excuse me, in 1825. The first record we found of Bristol's early life was in a diary, an account book of Dr. Speedman, where he's listed as purchasing sugar, and he's listed as Scott's man where Nancy and Brewster in the 1860s in Falkirk County's death record note that they lost two children mm -hmm. and the head of the household was William J. Morgan. By 1870, William J. Morgan is deceased. His widow is selling property. Brewster purchased his first parcel in the community known as Morgantown on Free State Road. Mm -hmm. In the late 1880s, Brewster is nearing the, his lifespan here in Fauquier. He has three sons, Peter, Gilbert, and James. These sons decided that they probably had enough of farming. They were very active within the community. We find that Peter and James both uh, worked as clerks in town this church now known as Mount Nebo Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Peter also owned a store and operated a store in West Virginia as well as in Morgantown. The sons were born during and before slavery, where daughter Lily, Brister and Nancy's daughter Lily was born in 1876 and her maiden name was Morgan. Mm -hmm. That always, uh, her more, middle name was Morgan, and that always puzzled me, whether this was after the uh, head of the household, and I assume slaveholder of Nancy. Um, I'm, I'm really not sure. But I know that with Bristol's uh, will had an executor who was Samuel Morgan, and uh, mm -hmm. William J. had a son by the name of Samuel Morgan, mm -hmm. but there was also a man of color in Warrington by the name of Samuel Morgan. Hmm. So I really don't know. Hmm. I could guess, but I'll leave that alone. Hmm. Hmm. This is the picture of Peter's family, his wife, Lucy, his daughter, Cora, his daughter, Lavinia, and his son, Norman. As I said, they went into DC. Peter was um, into building along with William F. Oliver, uh, there are quite a few records pertaining to Peter's activity. He also deeded the property in 1902 for the Mount Nebo 
Baptist Church. Um, mm -hmm. Lucy and Peter are buried on the family farm, on the property adjacent to the original lot that mm -hmm. Brister owned. Mm -hmm. And Norman, I believe, is buried in Manassas at Cat Harping mm -hmm. at the church lot. Yeah. Oh, okay. My yeah. James's family also went into, um, I'm going to try something. I hope I don't mess it up. Let's see if I take that down. Yes. Okay. James's family. Uh, also went into DC. He married another a woman by the name of Carrie Welsh. Carrie mm -hmm. is the daughter of Henry Welsh. Now Henry Welsh um, is an ancestor of our co-founder Karen King Lavoie. Oh, okay. Okay. That's now Carrie um, and James had quite a few sons, and John is there. He was born in 1882, Willie in 81, Gilbert in 84, mm -hmm. uh, James, which we knew was Jim, in 88, um, and Marion and George, uh, one was born in 89 and 91. They um, were very active in the DC communities mm -hmm. and different family members would go and lodge with them from time to time. Mm -hmm. As that they do with uh, Cora and Beanie, Lavinia. Of okay. uh, growing up as a child, we visited Cora and Lavinia. I don't recall going to James's home mm -hmm. as a child, but I do remember various family members over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, cousin Juliet, one of our founding members, is the daughter of John, who was born in 1882. Mm -hmm. Now, Gilbert's daughter, uh, this is cousin Lena, um, and she is the daughter of Sarah Thompson. Mm -hmm. I remember her because she would button her sweaters, the top two buttons and the bottom two buttons of her sweater and the <laughs> middle section would be open and she rolled her cigarettes. Oh, oh and my. at different times, dad would pick her up uh, from the Delaplane area. Mm -hmm. um, if that's my memory holds correct. Now, this is Jesse Ford. This is Lily's husband. Okay. They married in 1892. Hmm. And he is the son of Douglas Ford, okay. who told the story of um, how it was, what it was like to be an enslaved person. Hmm. So naturally, I assumed that Douglas Ford was an enslaved person. But doing research, I found that Douglas Ford was actually a free man of color living in Fauquier County. And he had his family members had been free for generations here mm. in the county. Mm. Um, he married a woman by the name of Ella Timbers, who was the daughter of Millie Timbers. Mm -hmm. And this Ella was the midwife, the midwife Yes. <laughs> the real midwife. Yes. <laughs> um, and they had several uh, children. One of those children, James, went into uh, D.C. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, James Samuel and his wife, Kara mm -hmm. Glad. Yeah. They're in D.C. here. So as I've mentioned, uh, the different locations is right. basically just showing a, a pattern of, of migration, so mm -hmm. to say. That's right. Now, this is Jesse and Lily down on the farm, mm -hmm. uh, that farm that Bristol purchased in 1870. Okay. He added uh, additional uh, parcels as well as his sons over the years. As Bristol got uh, aged, um, he decided that his daughter, Lily, was not as educated as the boys. Hmm. So he wanted to make sure that his daughter and his wife would be taken care of. Hmm. So he originally, all of the property was supposed to be divided among them. But as he became uh, less able to care for the farm, he decided to do a codicil to the will, uh, leaving, giving his sons their share at this point, and then their they were able to have it at that point as long as they would care for the sister and the uh, wife and the rest of the remainder mm -hmm. would go to them. And that's what they did. 
Mm-hmm. Now, Lily may not have had a formal education uh, mm-hmm. to suit her father, but she was an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. The farm was very active uh, and it uh, cared for generations. Lily raised chickens. Mm -hmm. On the back of this photograph that uh, was in what we call the parlor, the front room, Mm -hmm. uh, it it had the caption, bye bye chickens, Mm -hmm. because she sold chickens. (laughs) And that (laughs) went down through (laughs) the generations because growing up, when we would visit her daughter, Minnie, my grandmother, uh, we would tend the chickens every afternoon, (laughs) gathering up eggs. Great story. So this is uh, Jesse, one mm-hmm. of the daughters, and Lily. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I would assume that's Ella. It doesn't look like many. Mm-hmm. It looks like Ella. Mm-hmm. Um, and I encourage everyone that has photographs, please, with a pencil, write yes. the names on the back of the yeah. photograph. And if it's a, an event, mm-hmm. write that as well. Jesse and Ella had three daughters, Cassie. Mm-hmm. Jesse and Lily. Lily, yeah, had three daughters, Cassie, Ella, and Minnie. <laughs> now, Cassie is the oldest daughter. Ella's the middle, and Minnie is the youngest. Born in oh. 91, 95, and then 97. Oh. Cassie is the grandmother of Victoria Johnson, mm-hmm. who's our guest for today. Mm-hmm. Cassie and her husband, Nathaniel, is pictured here with daughter, Monona. And Cassie first went into D.C. and she was with one of the uncles, one of Lily's brother's families in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she met and married Nathaniel um, Anderson. Anderson. And they, from there, went up to Newport to Rhode Island where okay. Nathaniel's father was working at the time. Okay. Daughter Ella went to DC once again mm-hmm. and then on to New York. Yeah. I'm not sure which family member she mm-hmm. met there, but mm-hmm. there were uh, other family in that area from what I understand. And I guess that'll be another research thing yeah, on another day. <laughs> Moving and on. this is our grandparents. That's Minnie and her husband, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Minnie's the baby girl. And Minnie doesn't have a little uh, caption of the state because she's just stayed there on that farm mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. And she married a local boy, Daniel Lloyd uh, Smith mm-hmm. from Asheville. And here we found pictures of the generations. There's mm-hmm. Daniel with Lillian Mm-hmm. and Alfonso, the, uh, his children. And I believe that's Lily in the background. Mm-hmm. And this is a good morning on the farm. We have Lily, Minnie, Jesse, Lillian, and Alfonso. Okay. <laughs> and I thought I would just share a few of the great brands. That's Freddie. That's Victoria's brother and Angela, the baby. Yeah. And then you Aww. see the big sister hugging me so tight. Yeah. Things don't change. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. Still giving orders, I might, I might add. That's Easter Sunday, by the way. Easter Sunday? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's so sweet. Aww. So I'll have to look up 1954 on an Easter Sunday baby. to get the actual date. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because I was born in 53. And of course, all the grands and great grands visited the farm mm-hmm. on a regular yeah. basis. And it was yeah. easy for us because we just walked down the hill. Right. But that's the five of us Angela, Timothy, Aww. myself, Peter, and Aaron. Aww. And that's Fuzzy, our dog. Oh, look at Fuzzy. Aww. Now, I purposely left this slide the way it is. This is Ella, the many, the middle child. Yeah. And yesterday, when I was pulling these photographs together, I saw a picture of her husband, Uncle George, who used to visit us from, from uh, New York. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, I didn't make a copy of it at that moment. Mm-hmm. And now I can't find which folder it's in. So I encourage everyone to make sure you know where your photographs are, yeah. to label them and so that you can access them at will. Right. But Uncle George worked for 
a, sto a store. Hmm. And quite often we would get uh, toys shipped down from uh, New, New York hmm. in boxes. From the toy store. Yeah, from the toy oh store. And That's most rich. of the time they were seconds or had a few mishaps mm -hmm. that they couldn't put out on the shelves and mm -hmm. they were going to discard them. So he knew we'd play with them yeah, regardless. I'm sure you did. Yeah. So they it was like fun. Yeah. yeah. I never met Aunt Ella, oh, but I did meet her daughter, Marilyn. Beautiful young woman. Oh, she was mm. a glamorous, mm. glamorous woman. I remember her uh, coming home for homecomings, getting off the trailway mm. bus, mm. and you'd never know what she would have on or how her hair would be, <laughs> uh, but she wore it quite elegantly. Mm. It's gorgeous. And this is the proud grandma. She is mm. now holding Deanna, her oh, granddaughter. Oh, oh, that's so sweet. Beautiful pictures. And growing up, I had mm. a very difficult time uh, differentiating this picture as to whether it was my grandmother or my mm. great aunt. Yeah. But it is it so Aunt Ella. Like... Yeah. Mm. What a beautiful family. Now, we're going to spend a little more time with uh, Aunt Cassie and her children. Mm -hmm. Aunt Cassie uh, would often come back to the farm. Uh, so I knew her uh, when I was uh, a, a child, but she had three children, Busta, Geneva, and Monona. Mm -hmm. Her husband died early, okay. but they, as they would come back, they would always take photographs. Mm -hmm. And Granny would comment about them taking photographs all the time and sending them back home. But I'm so thankful they yes, were Yes, indeed. Mm, mm. What a marvelous collection. Mm. And this is uh, Geneva and her husband, Richard. Mm -hmm. It's Aunt Cassie's. And here, Aunt Cassie is making sure that the grands come back to the farm. So she yeah. is with grandson Richard there. Oh. And there's granddaughter Sandra. Oh. Mm. Aunt Cassie with Freddie. This is in Rhode Island. And that's uh, Monona, Freddie, mm. and Vicki. Yes. Mm -hmm. My son Buster and his wife, Helen. And their son, Leslie. Mm -hmm. Now, Leslie mm -hmm. is quite a vocalist, to say the least. Yeah. He sings with the doves. Oh, my. And, uh, mm. When my youngest daughter was growing up, he made her a little uh, CD of um, some, and he sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Mm. So he so, sang at the funeral, was that? Yes, he was, he was at, at our brother's uh, funeral yeah. and he sang there Beautiful as voice. well. Yeah, I mm. So it was not just the um, direct descendants of Lily and Jesse that visited there. Mm -hmm. It would be all of the children mm -hmm. and their descendants would yeah. come back. Mm -hmm. Picture we have Aunt Ella, mm -hmm. Leona, who is the daughter of Cora, who is the daughter of Peter. Okay. And that's Aunt Lillian, my mm -hmm. mother's sister. And oh. that's our mother there. But mm -hmm. all of this is in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. So as Time goes on, you see a chicken there, you see the peonies, <laughs> rose bush, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe that's corn across that fence there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And when they came home, they had homecomings. Mm -hmm. They would come home and come to church. Mm -hmm. So that's Papa Jesse, Jesse Ford, mm -hmm. that's Ella, mm -hmm. that's Lily, mm -hmm. and that's Reverend Moe Strawber. They're standing in the front of Morgantown. Mm -hmm. Now, I put homecoming Mount Nebo Morgan Town. Now, I'm questioning whether that's actually on a homecoming Sunday or not, mm -hmm. because I don't see the window open. Okay. So but the window's usually open on homecoming? Back in the day, for it was. the circulation. Yeah. For the air. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I really don't know. Yeah. Mm. But they always kept in Good touch. Looking. Good looking. So you see them over the years, still mm -hmm. photographed, still yeah. uh, sending and sharing their stories. Mm -hmm. They would come down from Newport. They would come from New York. They would come during the summers to help care for 
Papa Jesse and, and mm. Granny in the wheelchair. Mm. And we call her Granny in the wheelchair because it's their mother. But she raised those chickens and she mm. was getting them up one night during a thunderstorm. And she was on top of the hen house mm. getting her chickens in and the lightning struck the house. Oh my. And she was paralyzed. Oh yeah. my. Mm. Oh, and she, they did send her to New York. She's in a wheelchair here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. So you see Lily through the years and yeah. now Lily's an older lady mm -hmm. here. And this picture looks to me like our grandmother. Yes, you remember? I remember my grandmother looking just like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Oh, grandma, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't remember uh, Lily. Mm. other than going into the room after she had passed. Mm. Uh, but they tell a mean story on me. Oh, they said, do. In, Try to wake her up. No, and <laughs> you want to tell that story? She, they, they, they were always visitors at the house. And one day our neighbor, we called her Miss Lou, Miss Lucinda Miles was there. And granny said, you know, I'm 79 years old but I've never seen a child as bad as that in my life. And she was talking about Karen. And I remembered it because granny had to force the talk. She talked in a whisper because yeah. of her vocal cords. And uh, my mother said, you mean she was worse than Aunt Cassie? And granny just threw up her hands and said, yes, me. <laughs> oh, no. But I don't think Karen was bad. I think she was inquisitive. So yeah. she was constantly yeah. busy looking for things Curious. to yes. entertain herself. That's right. So having mm -hmm. learned that, I'm trying to be patient <laughs> and, and understand around, it. Right? Yes, yes. This is 1970. Uh, Freddie, Victoria, and Daryl came down for Angela's wedding. Mm. Now they're pictured, Fred and uh, Daryl is pictured here with Granny, uh, Minnie, and mm -hmm. uh, Aunt Lillian. Mm. Daryl is Victoria's son. Okay. Ooh. This is, I believe it's 79 or either 80. Mm. Um, so you have uh, several generations here. This is Marilyn's, um, this is Ella's daughter, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. This is Cassie's daughter, <coughs> Monona. Mm -hmm. And this is Cassie's son here, Fred, grandson, yeah. Monona's son, mm -hmm. Freddie. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is our grandmother, Minnie. This is the mm -hmm. baby girl. Oh. And she's holding my daughter, Ebony. Oh, and this my. is her daughter, Aunt Lillian, mm -hmm. and this is her brother, Uncle Jack, back here. Oh, so nice. And then mm -hmm. there's Angela peeping back, and uh, oh, yeah. Peter, mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. oh, what a nice picture. In May of 92, I guess it was actually around April, Uncle Jack, who is Alfonso, uh, wanted to make sure that he got a chance to meet all of the Grigsby descendants again. And he came up to mom's and he asked if we could put that together. So we mm -hmm. contacted James's family, John's, mm -hmm. um, different family members okay. that, were, that we knew were still living. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not aware of uh, Peter having descendants living at that time. I think his were all deceased. Wow. Um, and so this is what we did. So mm -hmm. this is the descendants of James Grigsby that came up okay. uh, to meet mm. Uncle Jack in 1992. My mother hosted mm. them at the house, which where, where we grew up mm -hmm. was a parcel of the land that was cut from some of the farm property. Right. So we shared uh, stories in the afternoon together with the lots, lots of food. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna tell a little story about this woman right here. This is Esther Grigsby. Okay. When I got ready to have Ebony, my daughter, in uh, 1975, I delivered her at Howard University. And there was a nurse there. I mm. thought she was the meanest woman ever. <laughs> and she was just very, very short with me. Mm. I was maybe, maybe I might have been a little whiny, you know, you yeah. can you quite a lot. Yeah, I, can imagine. I wanted sympathy for having this baby and she was not giving me any. Mm. And my mother and sister and some other people came down to see me 
Only did I find out then that this was Cousin Esther. Oh, I my. knew the name of Cousin <laughs> Esther, but I didn't know Cousin Esther. Cousin Esther was rough. Yeah. Oh, so she, she teased yeah. me from that point <laughs> on. But it was so it was a nice uh, gathering yeah. that day. Oh, there she is. Um, Uncle Jack passed October of 92. Mm-hmm. We had learned uh, during this course of time that his blood pressure was extremely high. Mm-hmm. And um, he died on the farm, and we found him. Uh, the neighbor found him uh, out by the fence. He had been repairing a fence, mm-hmm. and we were down at Crockett Park having our mm-hmm. annual AAHA mm-hmm. picnic. That was our mm-hmm. first picnic yes, that we had. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now this is Buster's son, Leslie Nathaniel here, mm-hmm. um, and his wife Virginia. Peter, Aunt Lillian, and myself. Mm -hmm. Now, it's easy to date this photograph. You see Aunt Lillian's hat? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Uh Now, this is Victoria. I remember when this picture came in the mail. Uh, This is graduation time. And she says to Aunt Minnie, love Vicky. By this time, the great grandparents are deceased Mm -hmm. and the visits would be to Aunt Minnie now. Mm -hmm. Aunt Cassie would come down to see her sister Minnie um, and Monona's children would come down. Buster came down. Mm -hmm. I think I was in the ninth grade when I met him Mm -hmm. and his son, Larry. And I didn't have a picture of Larry to share with you. Um, I haven't uh, pulled together all of them Mm -hmm. at, at this point. Now, what I would like to be able to do right now is to have you hear from Victoria. I'm going to share with you a three-minute YouTube presentation regarding her work Mm -hmm. in Newport.
the link is on there. Awesome, awesome presentation. Well, thank you. And that is an introduction to the migration as um, far as a local family that went north. Um, the people who did not see that video will be able to see it when yes, it comes yes. up on Facebook. They'll be able to see it on Facebook or what you can the do link? is to go ahead and uh, in the chat, we added the link. Okay. Jerry put the link it. in. Okay. Thank you, Jerry, for putting the link in. Thank you. If anyone has any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you at this point. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Nicole. I just wanted to thank you. This was great. I loved hearing about um, our mutual grandparent, Brister, and um, and the fact that uh, you had so many photos, including my great grandma. Lena was awesome. So thank you very much. I'm curious, have you ever found anything out about Nancy Glasscock? It seems like a, the Glasscock name comes up a lot in Falkir but I've never really um, found out or heard anything about her. I haven't found any more information on Nancy. Um, we know a description of her, but that's about, about it. Uh, Bristol's home place uh, burned and all of the photographs and documents that they had um, mm -hmm. were destroyed. The house, the farmhouse that we know today Uncle Pete uh, used to, as his office, and Gilbert also worked from there, from what I understand. Um, but I, I don't have any additional information. Okay, thanks. And we know that she was a glasscock. Yeah, I would know that she was definitely a glasscock because when the son James uh, died in DC, he lists his mother's maiden name. His mother's Nancy Glasscock. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Chris, you want to tell us about your next uh, Zoom you have scheduled? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. On uh, April the 26th, we will be visiting with Brenda Pitts Fuller, and she will talk to us about um, her roots in Carlisle County, where the Pitts family moved to Washington. And then um, from Washington, her father moved to Virginia to marry his wife. Apparently, he came to Virginia to um, Heart's Delight Baptist Church down in Catlett. Mm -hmm. And he saw Miss uh, Beatrice, as mm -hmm. I know her, Brenda's mother, and uh, they fell in love and, and got married. And he raised his family, the Pitts family in Virginia, in uh, Warrington. So that's how the Pittses came to Warrington. And Brenda and I and Angela were all in class together at Wimsey Tail High. And Brenda and I graduated. So it'll be a, such a delight to see her when she comes and, and shares with her. As a matter of fact, she has published three books on uh, genealogy and oh, the Pitts family and the um, 
the Fuller family. And one of them she is updating, the one she began in 1996, I think it was. So we look forward to seeing her. Yeah, that's wonderful, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. I encourage everyone to document as many of your family stories as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's quite easy now with these new cell phones yes, and is. everything. It is, it is. There's so much information out there. Victoria's yeah. website is this key. Put, put that picture. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going Actually, to... it's quite easy thanks to you ladies because everything I turn up searching on ancestry.com, here comes a link to an article in the African American Historical Society book here. So <laughs> that's what's making it easy. It's all your hard work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Leslie. She wants to know if the Grigsby home place is still there or in part. And the answer is yes, the property is still there. Um, the uh, farm itself is being least at this point uh, only because our, our brother uh, passed this uh, past fall and he was the main person that was uh, working it um, mm -hmm. we were doing the beef um, doing cattle on it uh, okay. but no one lived in the house since 92 uh, we had uh, my mother and aunt had install new windows and uh, hmm. did a pour the basement floor fix the fireplace and hmm. then it was vandalized hmm. and um, all the windows and everything were broken out and uh, at that point you couldn't insure unless someone was living in it so hmm. yeah so that's the story but there's still uh quite a few uh memories there and we do go down from time to time Mm -hmm. But growing up, um, there was a garden. The orchard uh, was no longer there. The pond had been closed in uh, mm -hmm. because uh, there were snapping turtles that were injuring the ducks that would mm -hmm. be on the pond. Uh, oh. There's an ice, uh, underground ice, ice house mm -hmm. that's in the garage. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when Granny would milk the cows in the afternoon and would do the separating. Yeah. Um, mm. So it's so a lot of lot of uh, things there. Yeah. Good memories. Oh yeah, no def memories. definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Leslie. Mm -hmm. And if there's nothing else, I think we can close up for today with the Zoom. And we'll okay. invite everyone else to come back. Um, okay. on the 26th and again we're open on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from uh, 10 to 3 and um, what everyone what's the website okay and the website um, is newportmiddlepassage.org for anyone that's interesting interested in that that's, that's for the uh, one up in Newport mm -hmm. I'll see if I can't uh, put that in. And that's the work that Victoria Johnson is doing. Yes. As a matter of fact, she and her group, she's on a commission who's putting up a marker to commemorate um, the Middle Passage, as well as the African American contributions to the city of um, uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Yeah. There is a PowerPoint that um, Victoria sent down, and I can start that if if you have the time and you want to see it. And we'll just let it play. So let me see if I can't share my screen and bring that up. And this was all related to the um, commission that Victoria is working with. Mm -hmm. I realized that was. Yeah, you see yeah. the packing mm -hmm. of the ship. Yeah.
I do realize that until this morning. Mm -hmm. Give it a passage. That's why he was a sheep for his own age was there. The pick of the person is sheep for her own age. Yes, she will own. I didn't know I was going to go. That's a dialogue. I hope it will. October's blessing. Mm. That should be nineteen fourteen. Mm -hmm.
So all of this will be on Facebook too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Victoria's picture with the blue sweater on. And that's the link to the um to the tour for the tour itself. Mm -hmm. And again, we thank everyone for tuning in. And thank you. And we look forward to seeing you again on the 26th. Thank you. Same time. God bless you. Did you notice how many people were on? I didn't. No, 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 no.